Hey everyone, it's been a while since I've done a Let's Play, uh, and it will keep being a while because this isn't really a Let's Play, it's a super cash long play of a game that I haven't played in a while, but I have played a fair few times in the past, uh, not because it's a good game, because it's ab it's absolutely not, uh, I, I only played it so much because of how much I love Animorphs, one of my absolute favorite book series. And it's that thing where you get invested in stuff that's related to a thing you love, even if the thing, if that stuff sucks. I should shut up for the scene, I guess. My interests have taken me far and wide, studying beings on worlds throughout the cosmos. Recently, my attention has been drawn to a conflict on a small blue world known as invasion, taking control of human minds, turning them into helpless slaves. But now, everything has changed. The Yurk leader, Vizzer III, gained control of a weapon powered by a continuum crystal. But the weapon was more powerful than expected. The crystal exploded. It shattered reality itself. Only one thing stands between the Yurk and ultimate victory. Alright, I've, I've kept my trap shut long enough. So, if you're an Animorphs fan, like me, as in, like, the books, you probably noticed some discrepancies in that uh, video, uh, in, in that cutscene. Uh, the Almost has not been around since the dawn of time, but uh, in fairness, this game was published before Elemist Chronicles came out. Uh, I looked that up. Looked up nothing else. Uh, it said Yurk instead of Yurks. Uh, you'd think that one would be a pretty obvious thing to fuck up, so I I got nothing there. Uh, and Marco's Battle Morph is now a Rhino. I'll explain my theory for that later on. So, as you can see, there's no playing as Axe or Tobias in this game, which sucks. But we've got our four other precious traumatized children to pick from in each level. In gameplay terms, they're uh, interchangeable. So we're just starting with Jake. If, if you thought the primary mechanic in an Animorphs game would be morphing, then, uh, how, how very naive and foolish of you. Uh, shame. <laughs> this is a platformer. Uh, you run and jump around as a human and collect coins to get extra lives. In these levels, morphing is just, uh, like, for specific designated areas for brief rounds of very simplistic uh, single-button combat. Each character only has the one battle morph that was in the opening cutscene. There are a few short levels uh, in, in between the platforming ones that are different, but we can, we can wait to get to those. So yeah, there's some hidden lives up there. I don't know how you're supposed to... There's just a random updraft that lets you jump there. I, I don't... I don't get it, but we'll need all the lives we can get, because uh, this game is kind of obnoxious and I haven't played it in a while, so... Although I was better at it than... Uh, than a person ought to be when I did play it. So 
so this level's called the entrance. Uh, I guess that means the entrance to the Yerk Pool. Uh, okay. But, uh, I mean, that just raises more questions than it answers, really. Like, how is it uh, this big, and there's all these floating platforms? I mean, that's a video game trope, whatever, who cares. But, like, why aren't there any hosts held, being held in cages in the background? And if so, why are we not in Morph? <laughs> why are there so few controllers at all? There's only uh, alien ones? <sighs> whatever. Shut up, Alex. It's, it's a PS1 licensed game, whatever. But just in general, you'll see the context for some of these levels is... Questionable. Let's let's leave it at that. Questionable. <laughs> okay, I I jump onto some platforms that I don't have to because I can't remember. There are a few uh, like most of these moving platforms like move right up next to each other and you can just walk from one to another but there are a couple that don't and I don't remember which ones they are and that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna throw me off nope not gonna make that jump there we go I'm just saying, all of this platforming, and it would be so much easier if we could just morph into... Well, I'm not even like a bird, like, okay, it's underground, I guess the Peregrine Falcon would be... Probably wouldn't be the best choice, but like, a, a bat? You get to be a bat later. This version of Jake, clearly, of all the... The kids clearly has the the bat morph. Uh, whoop, 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 hello. Uh. Okay. Uh. Yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> this game isn't unjanky. I mean, it's clearly it's a budget licensed game, but even by those standards, the, the there's some really janky platforming in here. And also, sometimes the jump button just uh, just doesn't uh, want to work. It's a very fickle. Time to teach him a lesson. There's some way to skip this fight, and for the life of me, I just don't remember. I don't know. There usually it's it's a very particular. This is very particular spacing and Can I change my mind about this? I uh, learned about skipping hey! you know skips like that like skipping fights because uh so last time I played this game I was considering speed running it which sounds ridiculous, and it is ridiculous. Uh, I, I only considered it because the way I got back into this game, for want of a better phrase, like why I revisited it as an adult, uh, was because of Kizaran's run from Games Done Quick 20. Oh jeez, I don't remember. It's like ADGQ, AGDQ, like 2017. I think something like that. It's the, it's the only run if you search it on YouTube. But his run of, of of this game is really entertaining and and goofy and uh, and so are the runs of the Game Boy Color Animorphs game, which he also did. That game's a, a Pokemon clone. That's not a platformer. That's a that's, that's a Pokemon clone. You acquire morphs like you're catching Pokemon, uh, and then you 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 know use them to fight. And that's the and like there's a whole thing where you you have to sneak around and not morph in front of NPCs. And 
I'll say this, you know, points for incorporating, actually incorporating the central conceit of the franchise into the game mechanics, and not just, oh hey, here's, here's a hork -Bajir. Time to morph, and, and then just smack it. That said, the Game Boy Color game is also way jankier than this. Uh, this is this is a bit janky, but that game you can soft lock at basically any time. Ooh, there's a. Oh, no, never mind. There was a. I I remembered the fight skip for this, but I remembered it too late. You gotta go up sooner. You know, whenever there's a checkpoint, you want to get everything. Damn it! You want to get everything else before you hit the checkpoint because the checkpoint, you know, will then remember if you didn't collect the extra life or the. Or wait, no, I think the extra lives. I don't. I don't remember. Okay. Okay. This. Uh, let's see if I can do this correctly, because you can't skip this fight, but if you lock on, and then, like, damage boost... I... I think? I... 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 That seems slower than it's supposed to. The good thing about that is that you don't need to... defeat the enemies, you just need to get to the end. That... that seems closer... Or, uh, that seems slower than it should be. Excuse you? Ugh. Collision, man. That seems slower than it should be because I, I can't tell if that's me doing it. It's either because I was doing it wrong or it's because that's a slight difference between the different morphs. So mostly don't exist. There we go. I, I'm used to doing it with Rachel, because uh, Rachel is just the one, for some reason, I don't think I, I don't know if I ever knew, but Rachel is the character that you use for speedruns. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why, but maybe, so maybe the bear morph uh, moves faster when it gets hit, or maybe I just done goofed it up. Enough already. Yeah, there's, uh, there's quips. Uh, that's something that changes slightly between characters. Like, some of the, some of the quips are, are the same. It's all really, you know, generic. I, they just sound very 90s. And it's very, you know, everyone... During some parts, everyone will say something like, insane! And I, I kind of appreciate that. I'm like, okay, well, that's something from the books that you that you got right. <laughs> there is, again, because, uh, you know, I, I played as Rachel last time in, in preparation for the... You know, when I was considering speedrunning it, and there's there's a line somewhere in this level uh, where she talks about I should have worn my lead bikini or something, which is um that's 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 a line, that's a sentence, all right. Oh yeah, I was bitching about it earlier, but then it it only uh, it came up there. So like you saw some of those. Let's see if I can do the fight skip here. Well, never mind. So, some of those platforms didn't slide all the way against each other, like they didn't connect. So if you try to walk from one to another, uh... Whoops! Is like a control room in there? I don't know. One wrong move and it's all over. 
Uh, yeah, and then this happens. Insane. Okay, there we go. Insane. Oh yeah, and then the game does a devious thing there. Uh, <laughs> it lines up two holes uh, right next to each other. Yeah, I don't know what the context for this thing is supposed to be. You'll probably hear me say that a lot. I'm really going to try and not be annoying about it, but... Now we're going to uh, do the, the second kind of level in this game. That was the entrance, now we're at the sea. We're going to be Jake again. Um... So the second kind of level in this game is uh, an auto-scroller. You're in morph the whole time. It's uh, the same morph for all the characters. Just in thought, in case you thought that there there was too much depth to this game. And there's three of these levels, and the levels are much shorter than platforming ones. And all you really have to do is avoid enemies, which I'm just doing a great job. Okay. But yeah, that's it. On the plus side, you can tell, this level has some, some pretty, pretty banging music. And I tell you, the next auto-scrolling level, it's, it's even better. Uh, the music's even better, and, and I only mean that, like, semi-ironically. I'm being, like, 60, 65% ironic when I say that. Uh, you'll, you'll see. Those clams do one damage if you run into them, but they do, I think, three damage if you hit them while they're closing, I think. Um... Then, then those those creepy fucking sea serpents or whatever. Actually, they're not. They're, they can't be sea serpents because they appear in another level later. But it wigged me out when I was a kid. And... Anyway, so that's the that's the end of the level. Uh, I told you they were short. All right, now we're back to platforming levels. Uh, levels, there's eight levels. Two, four, and six are auto-scrollers, and the rest are, are normal platforming levels. Uh, we skipped over Rachel there. We're gonna we're gonna be Cassie now. Hello. Anyway, we skipped over Rachel because I'm saving Rachel for the last two levels because I want to beat uh, the final boss with her because because she's my favorite. So, the technique for fighting is basically you run up to them, you double tap the attack button, and then you move away just a little bit, and then you repeat. Because uh, the first attack hits them, the second one puts them into like a blocking mode, and then you move away and they unblock, and you just go back in for another hit. Damn, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking it up. There's a way to skip these barriers. Uh, I just, I never got the hang of it and I don't really remember. Uh, nice easy time save here. Can I change my mind about you this? just keep jumping. There's a bunch more rocks that you're supposed to go back and forth on, but you can just uh, skip those by... This could be dangerous. 
you think? You think? The chasm, the infinite abyss? The rickety bridge over the infinite abyss. What is this? I, I don't... Like, even places that are supposed to be normal have just the weirdest shit in them. I swear to god. What? What is that hitbox? What? I... I really don't know what this is. It makes like a... Sort of a metal. It, 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 I don't know. It sounds like a robot when it gets hit, but I, I just don't know. Ooh, here's a skip. You're supposed to go to the right and then platform along some moving logs, but uh, fuck it. Just take damage, save time, and you just go straight up. And and it's it's a couple. Even if you're good at the really good at the platforming, it saves you a few seconds. There's also a slightly faster way where you can go diagonally across, but it, it's a little it's a little more difficult, and 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 you have to be at full health. I just picked the the easy one. Okay, so this is cool. I recognize these aliens because I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be howlers. Just in terms of character design, like... I mean, the idea of, of Howlers being that <laughs> fucking easy to kill is, uh, drastically uh, non-canonical. Uh, but, I don't know, the design? I'm like, yeah, I, I think that's what it's supposed to be. Also, just the... Again, another context thing is like, okay, so are they... It's not even a problem with the context, there just is no context for why we're fighting them. I know we're just supposed to assume that they're yerked, which is not a thing. Oh boy, okay. These platforms. Oof. Oof. This is also music that I like semi-ironically. It's it's just so hyper and, and goofy and I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. Um how All right. Got it. Well, that's a nice thing about this uh, stage. I'll, I'll I'll say that, or this this part of this stage is that you know there's platforms below you, so falling doesn't mean instant death like it normally does. That's probably gonna bite me in the ass. I don't know if I could have avoided it though. So I hit the checkpoint there before I hit triangle to um, activate the thing that makes that platform, the one I'm on right now, uh, move. Which means that if I die before I hit the next checkpoint, I have to remember to hit the triangle button. Uh, before I leave the platform, because it's not activated. Which I can't really complain about. Okay, yeah, there we go. Ooh! Thank god there's no fall damage. They decided to be merciful there. Yeah, that's a danger you gotta watch out for, is, uh, not to move in the direction of progress too soon without remembering to hit triangle again. 
to activate the thing. Okay, oh boy, uh, <laughs> these, uh, mm, yep. I need a crash helmet. Yeah, going towards the cameras, as annoying as it is in any other platformer from this era. Well, no, it's more annoying than it is in Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> the much better sense of where the hell you are in relation to everything else than <laughs> in Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> yeah, so gameplay wise, this is it's it's just the same as as the as the dolphin level, but with just different aesthetics uh, pasted over everything. We're, we're a dragonfly now, and we're in a swamp, and those those frogs will shoot their tongues out. Uh, they are fortunately not an instant kill, which you, you'd expect that they might be, but. So yeah, uh, check out this, uh, this fucking music. I told you that it was semi-ironically good. For it, wait for it. <laughs> it's so silly. I I love it. It's <laughs> I'll say this. The overall quality of the music in this game. It's a couple steps above the overall quality of the game. Uh, that That's not saying a lot, because if I haven't communicated this well enough already, this is a poorly made game. Uh, I'd say it's probably the... Yeah, I'd, I'd call it... It's definitely the worst game I've ever played to completion multiple times. Maybe the worst game I've played to completion at all. I'm really not hesitant to give up on shitty games. So the ones that I have finished, it's, it's mostly just a handful of licensed games that I played when I was younger, you know, when I was a kid, because I, you know, had lower standards and more free time. Actually, you know what, maybe the Game Boy version of X-Men... Oh god, what was it? That first uh, X-Men Next Dimension? Like, the Game Boy version of that, that was pretty terrible. Oh, you know, it occurs to me, I should have planned it out so that Cassie was the character for the gardens. Because, you know, her mom working there and everything, but uh, whatever. It really doesn't matter, y'all. It so doesn't. Uh, no, nothing back there. Okay, wait, there's, uh... Animal Central. I, I missed that. I missed Marco's hot quip. Okay, is there a... Is a All right, Buster. Buster. Hey, fight skip! <laughs> hey, I did the thing! Uh, so that's, that's cool. I got to... But of course I wouldn't want to skip them all anyway, cause... Okay, Rhino time. 
Marco's a rhino now. Okay, so my, my theory for why they replaced the Gorilla Morph with a rhino was so that they could use the same skin, or the same skeleton, excuse me, as the other morphs. Because, like, it's not even about being a quadruped, because, like, a Gorilla Morph could... Like, you could just control the gorilla moving on all fours. That's that's totally a thing you could do. But the body shape is different. Probably different enough that, like, they'd have to make a different skeleton. And I guess the budget did not extend to making the four characters control differently at all. Or have any mechanical differences. Is it Marco? Cause I don't I don't know what this thing is. I and it's like maybe it's a weird interpretation of a ged. Nope, not over there. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that's hilariously blatantly unsurvivable. And like Okay, here's the thing. These are all normal platforming things. I really don't, I don't want to be obnoxious about it. It's just the context where you have these kids who can morph into animals, but they still do ridiculous shit like that. I, you know, it's like there was a much easier explanation. I don't know. It's just, there's just some dumb conceptual designs here, whatever. I do enjoy the rhino's little trot, though. That's cute. So yeah, if that's if that's a ged, then I guess that's geds and howlers. I guess if they if those are meant to be, then. I mean, that's two creatures. It's not like they they had to come up with those designs on their own. They couldn't just take it from the from the TV show because because those didn't appear in the TV show. Even though they did take uh, you know the, roughly the character designs. It's not like exact likenesses, but in the character select screen, you you can tell that's a Sean Ashmore kind of Jake. You know, it looks more like them than it than they do any of the, the cover models from the the covers of the books themselves. Oh boy, well this part's shit. Um the platforms were hard. Wow, okay. I am making this section look way easier than it actually is. Chris I say that now it's gonna dunk on the words were barely out of my mouth. Instantly punished. Instantly punished by the, the X button ignoring me. <sighs> you know, it would be really great if the X button would actually register my inputs every time, but you know, we, we don't always get what we want. And sometimes, uh, nope. Not gonna happen. Yeah, that that one was me. That one was not me. God, I was saying something earlier, and I I don't even know if it was worth revisiting, because I'm 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 just I'm just trying to make this commentary uh, enjoyable, because otherwise, what's the point? That one was also me. Somebody could lose an eye. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of elements that are clearly based on how things were in the Nickelodeon TV show. What's weird, though, is that the, the main theme music, you heard it at the end of the opening cutscene, uh, and I guess it's it's over the, the overworld as well. Is it sounds like the 
H hello? Hello? Okay, I guess I can't do the skip. It sounds like the theme music from the TV show. For some reason, it isn't? I don't know, like, they, I don't know if they, there's some issue with the rights to the Next TV theme, but, well. I guess this is some storage warehouse underneath the gardens. I don't know. As you can see, the gardens do not look like a zoo amusement park type play. Or, I mean, they... bits of it look like that, but... What is that hitbox? Okay. B bits of it look like the gardens. Or what the, you know, the gardens should be. But some, some of it's just, uh, it's just really weird. There's this whole ice biome followed by a jungle biome, and it's... Not again. A as you'll see, as the environments get slightly stronger contextualization... Slightly uh, stronger, you'll sort of see, what is this movement? What is happening? Sliding all over the place. The context gets slightly clearer, like we know we're supposed to be at the gardens. So it, it sort of gets the idea, oh, shattered reality, oh, the MacGuffin crystal messed up and it shattered reality. So everything is... things are just weird, just reality got shattered, whatever. Oh, and there's giant alien tentacles uh, in the subway now. That's... That, that's why things are weird. That's all the explanation we need. And so now we're, we're up to the, the final auto-scroller level. Uh, very melodramatically named The Dark. Uh, which is it's, it's a little more, I don't know, abstract than all the other level names. So yeah, same deal. Uh, now we're a bat. Um, and instead of fake ska or fake Euro dance. There's just kind of, I don't know, it's kind of spooky. I don't like spooky action music. Oh, I, I didn't, um, I didn't point it out at the end of the last one of these or the beginning of this one, but if you'll notice, if you are curious enough to go back and, and look, I started this level. That that green bar in the bottom left is your boost meter. So w while it's green, you can boost. But then when it gets down to the red section, you have to wait for it to recharge. Normal boost meter shit. But this game stores your boost meter level in between levels. So I started off with less boost meter at the beginning of this uh, level because I left the swamp level uh, with a low boost meter. And not only does this carry over between levels, it carries over through the entire game. You, you need to reset the console in order to, in order to reset the, the boost level. Hello? Okay. Ah! I know, maybe I should have 
said something earlier to let y'all, any arachnophobes who are watching, th there's no spiders. Don't worry, there's just spider webs, there's no actual spiders. See, here's my problem with this. There is no reason that any of these levels couldn't have been about playing as Tobias. Like, you're in Morph the whole time, you're just sort of flying through wherever. Why couldn't you've... Why couldn't there have been a level of being a red-tailed red hawk flying through the forest? Or, you know, I get you, you want to be somewhere. Like, you can't be floating high up on the thermals. I, I just... Yeah, I don't know. My, my boy Tobias just got done dirty. I'm gonna get this extra life because I'm gonna need it. And, you know, on a budget, I get not being able to play as Axe. Like, that requires, like, just making an entirely new skeleton, changing up the gameplay, because, although I would actually be entertained to do a, uh, <laughs> to try to do platforming with the <laughs> awkward four-legged Andalite body. There's an optimal way to do these by, you, you do a, when it starts moving, when the platform starts moving, you do a momentum jump, like that, and then you make another normal jump to the next platform, and then you fall off. I'm not getting mad. Whatever, I've, I've complained about the hitboxes enough. Y'all get, y'all get the gist. Y'all know what this game is by now. Probably my favorite line reading of Insane. I'll say that. I'll say that much. Oh, yeah, these are annoying. Oh god, what, what the hell is wrong with me? Oh, and I'm definitely gonna die. Def- uh, yeah, I did- I did that on purpose. I absolutely did that on purpose. I did not mistime the- the rotation of- of these fans. Absolutely on purpose. I'm gonna have to keep- keep hitting this triangle button. I'm sorry, Rachel. I'm- I'm, I'm sorry. Alright, I'm not gonna- I'm gonna stop trying to- Make that cycle. I'm gonna just stay here. There we go. There we go. Anyway, so the, that triangle button made that platform activate. See, so yeah, this level's the city. I don't know what part of the city in particular this is, but whatever, it's a city. It could be any number of places. Yeah, this lava, or the, uh, not lava, molten, molten steel. <laughs> lava. I don't know. Lava was was earlier. Wogeda, 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 wogeda.
Oh, there is there is a thing that I can show off here. Uh, well, I mean, mm, do I want to? Because it's finicky. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's try it. Oh, no, yeah, there we go. So collected the hit the checkpoint. They hit me into the checkpoint. So I'm gonna wait here for them to kill me. The the way this is happening means that it is not speed tech in this instance, but hey, look, I'm right here, and I'm not morphed, so the Howlers have no idea what's going on, and they, and I can just skip the fight. In speedruns, that's useful tech. It took me a long time to die that time, and I'm not speedrunning. Uh, and I'm not speedrunning anyway, so... Oh, these platforms are the bane of my life. You can walk behind if you if you go behind these uh, moving platforms. Uh, they don't affect you. There's just no collision from behind. Someone really ought to. Here's the other thing. Animorphs would be just such a great game. Like, I would... I, I, I just imagine, especially now, you know, you get a, a AAA budget and, uh, and, and, and just all of the resources behind it. You could make a fucking sweet Animorphs game where it's, you know, admission-based... And, like, you can do side missions. It's, it, you know, essentially linear, but there's some side missions you can do. You know, you have a certain number of morphs that you have to acquire for the campaign, uh, but you can also... Uh, you can also get optional morphs to sort of change up your strategy, and each morph, like, even morphs of the same kind, like, oh, battle morphs, or flying morphs, or whatever, or, or you know, swimming morphs, all... They control slightly differently, so you can sort of customize a, a play style, you know, based on your strategy. Yeah, and you can do side missions can include, like, between story missions, you can go and get... Uh, oh yeah, by the way, there's jazz. Jazz music now to go with the flailing, creepy alien tentacles. And I'm mostly pausing, cause... Yep, Jazz is gone now. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. No, it's, it's back to more electronic shit for this lava chasm. Oh, but seriously, like, just imagine... You know, it'd be mission-based structure, but there'd be recurring, you know, environments you could go and revisit. You know, you could go back to the gardens in between story missions and acquire new morphs. And you could... And, and like, you could even do... Do you want to do this action-oriented, or, or do you want to do it stealth-oriented? And, like, you could do that easily. Like, it just, oh, there's a certain way that you approach it. You can use, like, a bug or whatever to stealth your way in. Uh, and, and, you know, sometimes uh, combat would be mandatory and sometimes stealth would be mandatory, but, like, you know, just to use the morphs strategically. And you could have a time limit to play into, like, oh, two hours in, in one morph and then you're stuck forever. Actually, on that subject, I haven't pointed this out. There's a timer in the lower right-hand corner that I'm sure, I'm sure most of you probably noticed already, because it pops up every time we go into a battle morph. But it, it's two minutes to sort of uh, replicate the. Don't be in morph for two hours. It's I don't know. It's an homage. It's not a. And it's also not a real game mechanic, because, like, I I've never gone over time limit in a morph. Because there's no guard option, there's no way to play it defensively, except to, like, just avoid them. 
And like, I don't know, at a certain point, whatever, man. Like, you're gonna get killed by the enemies before you're gonna get killed by the time limit. I don't actually know what it's like if... Oh, man. Should I get stuck on purpose? Nah, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. But yeah, I'm not sure what happens if you stay for two minutes in Morph. I mean, I assume you just sort of poof into lights like you do with any normal death, but... Let's do it! You know, part of why I enjoy... I, or, well, no, I don't enjoy this game. Part of why this game... Part of why I found this game to be uh, worth streaming or you know a, doing a doing a, a long play of uh, with commentary is just because of stuff like that. It, it's one of those the jankiness between some of the des design decisions and the jankiness. It, it's funny bad. It's not. It's not boring bad. I'll give it that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this part's shit. I, made it. I, I feel like I've said that before, but... If it continues to be true, then, uh... I mean, call, call it like it is. Mm -mm, no! Uh, yeah, those platforms, you gotta keep your weight on them long enough to... To get them high enough so that you can climb up to the... I mean, on this this portion, there's a similar uh, part to that later, where the height difference between platforms is large enough that you've gotta you gotta do that. But These platforms, okay. So the the cycle on these platforms is um. I think the technical term is uh, is fakakta. <sighs> yeah, you gotta be right on the stick there. I'm amazed that only took me two two go rounds um, to. Okay, we'll see, uh, I, um, second try, again, second try and then first try, uh, it's because I remembered how Fakak the, the, the cycle on those was. Okay, be even more careful. <laughs> Thanks for the advice, Rachel. I, I appreciate you, homegirl. Even though, be even more careful is not a thing that you would ever say. <laughs> it is not your, uh, your ethos. That is not... Nope. Oh, right. All right, so final level. Very unimaginatively called the finale. Although I guess it's it's some kind of uh, I don't know radio tower satellite tower where I guess the implication is that Visser Three was gonna uh, broadcast something to do something I don't know. This is the most ambiguous MacGuffin ever.
Uh, this level, so obviously the auto-scrollers are done, but this level is also really short. Way shorter than any of the other platforming levels, and certainly way shorter than the last one. City's the, the really long one. And so it's we've got this platforming segment, just platforms out in the, the, the void. Yeah, it's not a particularly easy platforming segment, but it's it's short, you'll see. And then it's just the final boss. She sounds so happy. I just, I don't know. You'll see Visser 3 is waiting for us in some kind of morph. Uh, I don't remember all of... I don't remember all of his morphs from the book well enough to remember if this fits a description of any of them. It's not any of the ones that I do remember. I'll, I'll say this. Visser 3 has a lot of ridiculous uh, alien morphs and... As big a fan as, of, uh, as I am, I don't remember all of them. Okay, so this fight isn't easy exactly, but if you do the tech right, it looks really anticlimactic, like this. I was absolutely not doing the tech right before, and I, I fucked it up there, but... You're in the habit of double hitting because of the normal battles, but if you double hit him, you know there's a there's there's a place where you can stun lock it. God damn it! Um, there is a place where you can, uh, you know, a, a narrow window where you can hit him, and you can stun lock him that way. But it's just it's a trickier window from when he uncurls. I'm just so much in double hit mode. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you just hit him once, and this resetting animation, there's a good window, there's a slightly easier window where you can just hit him, and so that was the final boss battle, and, and he didn't get a hit on me that last round, and it's the dumbest thing. Also, doesn't matter who we picked, Axe's contribution to this game is that he is the one who gets to appear in the cutscene uh, after you defeat Vista 3, because sure, why not? And we fix the MacGuffin machine, and things have just gone back to normal, I guess? Um, they're smiling at the sunset. And one last shot of Tobias, and... So that was Animorph Shattered Reality. Uh, that's really all there is to this game. Uh, so I hope you got some enjoyment out of that. If there's one important thing that you take away from this, uh, it's that the Animorphs books are really good and you should read those and you should not play this game. Also, because you've seen everything worth seeing about this game just now. Uh, Lord knows the practice of playing it sucks. Uh, so yeah, read the books instead. The Animorphs books are really fucking good, so read them if you haven't read them already. And if you have read them already, uh, I think you should reread them. I think that's a good usage of your time. In fact, I think I need to go and do that myself. So, uh, if you've made it this far, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Now that I have my new video capture set up, working, and, and thoroughly tested, I might just start working on some future LP stuff. So, stay tuned. Bye.